with things that they should not have got away with. They actually were in poor positions around the map fairly often, but they got away with it because Ray's good one we on Pac-Man because he was super far behind. Yep. But why was he far behind? Because the Twisted Fate and the Bard can roam in the first place to try and get things done on the map. They had really good map control when it came to dragons and turrets, but you gave them the best champions to do it to then put yourself into a poor position afterwards. So realistically, take that off the board is probably the number one strategy that you could do if you're Abyss and react to what Direwolves have done in this first game and then beat them in a standard environment and actually pick up on those mistakes that the champions can't hide. Yeah, that's exactly right. And of course, it was just playing into Direwolves hands as well, considering their play style. You heard the desk talking about it, the fact that this is what the Dials want to do. They want to get on the Twist of Fate. They want to move around the map. They want to utilize things like Bard to get stuff going on. And of course, Regret so seamlessly fits into that play style. Excellent addition to the team. But we are in a champion select. And of course, Nidalee and Soraka have been banned away on the side of the Dials. Of course, champions that can stall things that Dials like to do. So really nice to see them being removed. But you can see Fizz and Twisted Fate now to be taken away from the Dials. Azir going to be an answer here at the same time. We'll see what the final ban is from Abyss. Anything standing out to you, Rusty? More bad. But uh, Nidalee and Soraka, of course, being taken away gives a, a lot of sustain away from Abyss. So you'd imagine perhaps Braum going to be their primary focus. So even if they ban the bard away right now, it actually gives opportunities perhaps to Direwolf. So very interesting to see where they go with it. Yeah. So, of course, the rise was... What was removed, not going to fall through the draft this time around. Of course, Luch unable to find success on the champion in game number one. As Lucian, of course, available. Raid, as we mentioned before, uh, Bensel letting us know about his play style. Very fresh out of solo queue. But does favor things like the Lucian. Super green. We'll see how he actually goes naturally. But Lucian, I would imagine, is the first pick here from Diable. Most likely away from Raid as well. Yeah. Of course, Raid's currently... Thinking about a vein, but Which of course, Chippy's just... Yeah. He's, that, he's that kind of a guy. Gwinsu's rage go. vein actually pretty good. Oh, okay. Yeah. You get your... Uh, it's like the state of Devourer with one item. Yep. Costs a little bit more, but does a little bit more at the same time. Do like it. There's eight seconds to go. Yep, yeah, there it is. So Lucian is going to be locked in. They just decided to take some time doing it. And Abyss... Now to come through with their couple of picks. Of course, still a lot of strong things available. There's mm. Trundle, of course, there for the top side. Pac-Man, of course, the Trundle man himself. If you're ever going to find success. Pac-Man and Sab have the opposite resting places. I know. <laughs> Pac-Man just so jolly. I don't know how he is after that last game. I mean, that was a difficult one, but still, just in high spirits. Whereas Seb's just like, stop looking at me, bro. So I like that the Kindred is an option as well for Seb, but it's mostly yeah. to take it away from Sybil, and that's one of the major concerns. Deep down, I think he should still be playing the Elite, something that can get efficient ganks off and keep the Kindred out of your jungle as well if it comes down to it. But as far as first drafts go here, I'm quite happy with what Abyss have got. Very good point. Well, Sybil still with a lot of niche picks for himself. Oh, The man that plays Zack. Yeah, we're on 6.10 as well, so Fiddlesticks becomes a Scarecrow. Yeah. So it definitely makes him overpowered. Please, oh. please. Probably not going to happen, though, as Sybil is a phenomenal Elise player. We mentioned Seb's prowess on the champion, but Sybil has always been renowned. Is the man who killed Raider. Yeah. In a ridiculous 1v1. <laughs> Cycling through a lot, though, as Echo now being considered would be a very standard couple of picks here for the Dials, not really giving anything away. As, okay, it is going to be the Zack. Hmm. And so I guess they had knowledge, right, that it's going to be the Kindred. They don't have to go for the Elise, and we keep praising Elise into this matchup as well, but they just never seem to be wanting it. Yep. I do love the fact that Raid is invisible there, hovering Twitch. Perfect. Yep. As well as the uh, Zack and Echo being locked in by Dials on the flip side, so Chippies will have that in his back pocket. Fantix doesn't have Twisted Fate, though. That's the first thing that we have to look towards. Yeah. Will he go LeBlanc? What will he actually pick? Oh, has he been watching China? Thinks that Cassidy could be a pick into the victor. Of course, Fantix, a renowned Cassidy player. Phenomenal on the pickup. Will mean that they're sort of lacking a little bit of the wave clear. Nothing like a Graves coming out of the jungle with that clear available to him. See what they are going to grab. And if Trundle's picked up, it's going to be very scary here from Abyss. Those solo lanes are looking a lot more powerful. Yeah, Trundle's always going to be a strong champion. Raid having a hard time deciding which AD <laughs> carry he wanted. 
is going to be Ezreal rested on in the end. And now Direwolves will see exactly what they are going to go to to round out this comp. Chippies, bit of a shout out there as he was the Aurelia main. I mean, it's in a trundle if he really wants it to. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying. <laughs> His echo, though. Like depended on what. Off. No, no, depended on what Vantix wants to play, which is naturally going to be their last look towards. With the support, which, interestingly enough, hasn't been locked until their last rotation, so I'd expect perhaps the Bard again. Yep. It was a pretty big deal in game number one. Bard Lucian, also a really dominant lane. But Braum also there, given that there is an Ezreal locked in on the flip side. Yep. Wouldn't be too bad. Once again, options here for Direwolves. They are taking their time working through them as well. Which is regret. Not even having a think about anything in particular now. Four seconds to go. Cassidy is going to be locked in. And there's the bard for regret. I actually quite like... Oh, there it is. The switchover as Gangplank comes in. Of course, Looch has been the man to play the Gangplank so far here in the OPL. Yeah. Did so to quite great effect, if I remember correctly. It was 20 set CS ahead at 20 minutes on the champion. 75% mm -hmm. kill participation. The man did pretty well. 6, 2, and 3. Yeah. So, lastly, with the Divals completely rounded out team composition, we still don't know which champion is going where between yeah. Fantix and Chippies. Always famously flexible. Now, we have the expectations set in stone, being that it's going to be GP mid and Echo top, but you never really know. You don't. As we await the last option from... And how does Gangplank fare into the Trundle? If we were yeah. to consider that matter. I mean, it's okay. You can kite the Trundle. That's yeah. a big deal. Pillar placement's actually the big deal there on the flip side. Pac-Man. I think he'll be happier this time around, however. Ooh. As it's a... Huh. That would be a little bit of a switch up. Of course, the classic disengage style bottom lane. But we have seen a little bit of a fall out of favor for the Trundle. Yeah. But it is going to mean that... Pac-Man gets to hop on that Maokai towards the top side of the map, and they have that super tank. We've seen the victor Maokai combination be utilized internationally to great effect. Well, actually, to varying success, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But as far as a stand and deliver composition is concerned, Abyss Esports probably wouldn't want anything more than this. Yeah, so they've got the Maokai for the front line. They've got a half tank, essentially, with T-Gun on that support trundle. Whenever his ult's available, he's always going to be considered a tank. Yep. But most importantly, the Kindred to keep the standing and delivering members of Abyss alive when it comes down to it. On the flip side, however, really good engage, really good pick, and just feels like it's the Diables. Yeah. With every fiber of their being in terms of the draft. Ray's on the Lucian as well. It is the Ray's special champion. Mm -hmm. This is the Lucian patch when it comes to AD carries. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at the Diables and I'm thinking that they're quite strong. Yeah, most certainly. And there's the fact that they have so much early power here on the bottom side of the map and regret if he's known for anything, it's wanting to get up close and personal very early yeah. on in the laning phase. And we'll see whether we are going to get standard lanes this time, whether they're going to try and abuse that. So, yeah, I think they could be uh, sitting in those standard lanes, remembering that we've got the Bard into Trundle matchup and see how regret goes. Yeah, possibly some namesake action happening here. Is Use that hashtag DWN if you think that the Diables are going to be able to take this one out 2-0. Or if you think that Abyss Esports have what it takes to come back. Now with Raid on the roster instead of Squidgy this time around. Use that hashtag AEWIN. And man, look. I'm interested to see what Abyss are going to be able to offer from the bottom side of the map. Given that change up. And I'm excited to see uh, sort of some substitutions coming in mid-series as well. Because this is something that the teams are capable of as we hop onto the Rift. Yeah, Raid going to be a big question mark on the face of Abyss Esports for game number two. No more Squidgy, but definitely still a challenge nonetheless to actually work around this hard carry AD as he has been defined as we're now watching the aggressive level one move out from Direwolves. About to find Seb. Yeah, Seb Really actually. about to find oh Seb. Oh my goodness, flashes. That Cosmic Binding was so close, but still going to get caught out. And that is going to be First Blood going to Chippies. He's excited about it as well as you can see him running away. And that is a pretty good start here for the Direwolves. Yeah, Seb doesn't hit the flash. Walks out the wrong place at the wrong time. And the surprise five-man out of the Direwolves actually gets what they're looking for. There's a response, to be fair, from Abyss. They deep ward on the bottom side of the jungle and even get a cheeky one on the top side from Pac-Man. So they'll have knowledge of the start. But look at where Dials are standing. Yeah, and they've got a complete ward line there towards the top side of the map as well. Oh, that's clever, though, from Looch. So what they're trying to do is get the standard lanes, it feels like, Abyss. And what Looch just did 
was walk up to the turret. There was only one way the direwolves could have walked without being spotted by a ward. Yep. And he stopped that from actually being possible just by walking up and kind of being there. Is there any reason why they'd be opting into standard lanes? Because I'm sort of looking at Bard Lucian thinking this is something you may want to avoid. I mean, based off the last game, they're worried that they can't play the map as well, perhaps. Yeah, that makes sense. They want to have Luch actually comfortable in this middle lane as well against Fantix. Going for the teleport as well instead of an Ignite or Exhaust, losing a bit of kill threat. So I think you'll find that, yeah, level one, if he times his spells right, he'll be very happy in this lane. You can see Fantix, of course, going to be pushed around a little bit here in this early game, given the fact that he is Gangplank. A little bit shorter ranged than that of the... So Luch oh just walked goodness. straight up to him and almost took the passive, which would have been... Brutal. Uh, ...not acceptable, to be quite frank. Level 2 is more of a turning point for Gangplank to an extent, but considering how he's done in level 1, I don't know we're tunneling on this middle lane a bit, but that should not be traded so evenly. Last time we saw this matchup, Choo Choo's was playing it, I believe, the Victor. Yep. And uh, put on a show against the GP. Might not have been. Uh, actually, that. no, I don't think it was. No. It was, um, it was Abyss Esports that did play that one out, so I believe it was this match. Yeah. Fighting off the opposite end of it this time. Yeah, precisely. But, of course, Fantix was known as a phenomenal Gangplank player, especially when uh, Gangplank was at his peak and sort of permanently banned. That was a deep invade just then from Dire Wolves' bottom lane as well. Looking for Vision and to find Seb. Going to be in a certain amount of areas. As well. Whoa! Sybil. Almost gets the knock up, does Sybil. Able to slow him down a little bit with those long arms. Yeah, and that was just after a keg connected. So, early aggression once again onto that Victor. Making his presence known, Sybil. And that's an important feature. Going through his mana bar here is Luch. His as presence well. is known. <laughs> oh my goodness. Little Margin Boo making his way in. There's the slow keg goes down. Knock up's good as he wants to find the keg. Doesn't get there as the flash has to come out from Sybil. Still has a passive, of course, as Twisted Advance is right in there. Luch in trouble as Chippies is going to turn on him. Parallel Convergence will be able to offer him a bit of a shield. Actually, quite a shield there as Chippies moves back under the turret, but. A lot going down, no one's gonna die. Yeah, initial trades though, as everybody uses a lot of summoner spells to keep themselves happy and healthy. Seb though, the big benefactor, if we look at the overall, what just happened in that yeah. fight, is that he now gets a bit of extra farm in his back pocket, has the free roam of Sybil's jungle, who had to recall. Gets himself a mark yeah. too, which is important. So everything going right here for Abyss, if it's not a small thing. But Fantix. Actually ahead in farm just a little bit as he teleports back into the mid lane. Has himself some components of his Trinity Force. That's so contrasted by the junglers, right? Yeah. And he's not done, so... Flasher actually has to be with different Fantix, so... A lot of power removed from the Dial's mid lane. As Luch might actually be able to find his way back in more than easily. Nice work there from Fantix with timing. A bit delicate sometimes, and Victor's quite good at killing them if he cues you yeah. or a minion and then actually just hits the cake because it's instant and be quicker than that of a gangplank. Well, decent death ray, uh, death ray placement there as well from Luch. He's doing his best to keep Fantix away from this minion line, getting himself back into a better position. You've been bamboozled, Fantix. <laughs> you can't cue that one. But having a look at the bottom lane here, I mean, my god. Raise and Regret doing work against Raiden T-Gun at the moment, 42 to 31. And that was our first question, is why do they want standard lanes? Yeah. It is a Bard into a Trundle and, oh wow. Yeah, that's three people. In goes everyone. Stun comes down here as well as they want to give the kill to Fantix. Chippies picks it up though as Fantix, I believe, may have got it with the passive, but they didn't want to take the chance. And that is going to be Luch falling. Has the teleport still available? So we'll be able to get back to the lane in time to save his turret at least, but nice work. Getting Dialwolves back on the board in that mid lane. Yeah, really well done from Chippies in particular. The no teleport roam from top lane. Sybil as well. Now is that level 5 mark 3 points into the Elastic Slingshot. About to meet Seb and probably not want to meet Seb. Yeah. Long arms are Chippies is there. putting in work. He's going so ham here as Pac-Man actually has to flash in a 1v1 situation. Oh my god. Yeah, there's the ultimate as well. Completely cutting it off and splat goes the tree as Sybil just pounds him. And straight up, Chippies is compensating for that first blood that he gets and the lack of a twisted fate on the board. Unbelievable stuff here from the Dial's top laner. Seb now 
Yeah. Why not want to be here? The roam comes in from Regret as the stun comes down as well. Fantix looking to try and catch up. There's the peg. The keg, in fact. Oh, regret. Regret, regret flashes regret. forward. My god, he's aggressive. As there's the elastic slingshot. Gets the slow somehow. Regret deserved kill for the support player. Direwolves, man. They're a highlight reel today. They're absolutely prowess in skirmish is where you're going to find them right now. The chilling smite was actually what slowed them down oh, there from Sybil. Locks it in. Seagun is going to poke his head around. Going for a, a, a pillar steal. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going for. Just, yeah. leave it. just getting impossible. vision. Checking members. Making sure raid is safe, I suppose. Still, well done once again from Diables. Exactly. Ocean Drake is going to fall down once again as the first dragon. Sort of the Diables flavor as far as that dragon is concerned as well. And you can see Fantix actually beginning to get a bit of zoning happening here in the mid lane. Yeah, once you get a Sheen, you place a keg, you actually uh, cause some issues. Includes can't control the lane and get that keg. But still going to be happy in this middle lane because he can farm. He has lasers. Yeah. Always helpful. Yeah, yeah there you go. Final. Victor actually quite good at it. Not death rate. Going to be able to pick up a little bit of damage back. But you can see Fantix just so happy in this lane now. Able to eat oranges if, oranges if he ever falls into trouble as Chippies. He's actually going to get found out by Seb here. Of course, ultimate available as Chippy's just procs the passive and he's more than happy. Shield to be picked up from the Parallel Convergence and he just wanders out of the way. Yeah, I think deep down Chippy's wanted to fight that. If he hit the ult in the Parallel Convergence, yeah, probably would have found the kill. Sybil as well, boots of mobility, first item before upgrading towards most likely the Cinder Hulk. Let's just say that there's a possibility of like a Runic Echo somewhere in there. Well, we have actually, I mean, this is the second time that we've seen the boots of mobility. I believe Carbon picked a pair of them up as well in our first series today. A lot of movement speed, a coveted statistic. What's well, really important, that's right. They don't know whether they're going to be able to get a Cloud Drake. Of course, the next one is going to be that Infernal. Well, that's why people rate the Cloud Drake highly if they are to rate it at all. It's because you get around the map quicker. Yeah. But Boots of Mobility, if there is no Cloud Drake, is probably the way to go. Two Clouds, I think you're looking at, with our Boots of Swiftness compensates for having... Yep. Consistent move speed. Gets your head by about 5 or 10. And then your move is out of combat anyway. Oh, Essentially. Fantix. Doing Fantix things here, picking up Popcorn Chicken. Under the nose of Looch and Seb. Another. Man's got a lot of cakes in his back pocket. He does. It really is like Pokemon, isn't it? Because you mm -hmm. can't, like, no one has that many pockets. <laughs> <laughs> that many cakes. It has to, like, be a mini one that he throws out. I like it. A lot of these references. So we're just farming things up. We'll see where he wants to make his presence known on the map next as we're looking around. But so far, you can see Pac-Man's actually done very well as far as farm is concerned. But the fact that Chippies is 3-0-0, massive benefactor of this early game from the Direwolves. Yeah, the man with teleport up. Yeah. It's be very frightening. Of course, haven't capitalized on the lack of flash of Pac-Man, which is... Good news, but there's the gank into the mid lane one more time. Let's Bounce comes out as the barrels are going to be dodged. Ult comes out from Fantix as he does actually soak the stun, but they are just all in on this one. Keg is going to go down there as Seb chasing after Sybil. You can see it's, yeah, no more Fantix they in this fight. They need to save him though. He's about to die. Yeah, Chippy's doing what he can. Raid actually picks that one up as Chippy's throws out the ultimate. Full health now back again. Chippy has to run yeah. away. So there's little mana, but Seb's got enough chase. I think Chippies is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, the flash forward. Arcane smash into the shutdown from Seb. Nice turnaround from Abyss. As Diwell's fighting here on the bottom side of the map, Raze uses his last mana in order to clear out the mini wave with the culling. And given the series of unfortunate events that just occurred for Direwolves, Regret wishes that he had that Tempered Fate available to him in the bottom lane, yep. and that he didn't use it to kill Chippies in the middle lane. Very... Awkward, to say the least. Sybil goes down. Fantix overcommits to get a single kill. And they're just trying to make Lucha's life miserable. It's not enough. Still, 100% kill participation for the Gangplank. Always very scary to see him sort of finding his way into the late game effectively. Still has that CS lead, although not by much here at all. It's regret. Magical journeys his way across. Has to flash, but Seb's going to pick it up with the Wolf's fight. Can't make those overly aggressive plays, even if you do have your jungler coming in. No, that was just perfect from Seb. I don't think there's a better way to describe that. He was where he needed to be. Well oh, done. Oh, that pillar was 10 out of 10 from T-Gun. 
Flash has to be used. It's a decent one, but Luch in the right place at the right time. Abyss fighting back so beautifully as Fantix looking for what he can. That's a four-man set of kegs, but it's not going to be enough to save his jungler. And suddenly, Abyss are now in the driver's seat in this second game against the Direwolves, who are just making repeated mistakes. And it's mostly on the back of Seb once again, doing the same thing as he did in game one, but with not completely losing lanes. He's been able to have an impact. Yeah, and, and that's that impact that's everything. That graphic that we saw from the analyst desk, perfect when it comes to identifying who is doing this for Abyss. Three, two, and two now. 100% kill participation for himself. As, look, Seb may have fallen down early on. Doesn't look like it matters too much here for Abyss as they're utilizing his power in that farming mode to great effect. Three long swords now as well as that Blood Razor. This guy is a beast. I think the other big thing we need to look towards though is actually the AD carries is Raid wasn't having the best time, but no. he's found himself 201, even picking up a kill in the middle lane onto that Zac passive. Now Raid showing up big. Even the awareness when he was in the middle of fighting regret and Raid to use his ult mid. Yeah. Really smart stuff here. Looking good. Nice cosmic binding. Meep slap comes down from regret, but Raid trades back very nicely as Raid is, of course, just farming out the minion wave. More magics. He's getting harassed here by Luch. Sybil has to run away. Wolfspike comes in for a lot of damage one more time as Luch just happy to take that one by the looks of things. Ult, ult comes in and Fantix clears out the wave and will head back to base. Has teleport if he needs it. We'll see. That's a big cooldown. Not available to affect the side lanes, which is where Fantix likes to use it. Yeah, but if he has a Trinity Force now, then it's going to be reasonably worth it. I don't think it does, however. Oh, Raid actually going to get stunned up here. Massive damage out of Raze here as T-Gun can't really do too much. There's the Tempered Fate as Raze was actually looking for the Ezreal. Nice flash, but the culling comes in and Raze just finishes that one off. Nice play as the Dragon is going to fall down. So Abyss grabbed themselves an Infernal Drake and that possibly could be worth the trade of the support player. Yeah, they pick up themselves that Dragon. Very positive stuff here for Abyss and T-Gun going down merely to keep his AD carry alive that still being mechanic on. Mechanics and by regret. Stunning. But of course, very strong reactive play to get themselves those kills at all. Fantic's very close to his Trinity Force. Still something they're waiting on. Yeah, it certainly is. Boots of Swiftness there as well. And he'll just take away the blue buff on his own. But Change made to the a blue mistake. buff. If he, if it like if there's anything bad about it, I mean, Fantix doesn't really care about the added ability power. Although, you know, I guess the oranges do a little bit more. He doesn't have yeah. any more. Yep. Oh, the keg's actually going to land there as well as Pac-Man getting bounced on. T-Gun finds his way over. Fantix wants to take the blue buff, but it's a nice pillar to come in for a bit of a disengage. Watch Luch, though. Oh, he steals it. Really nice death ray. And Luch says, thank you very much. The shot calling from Direwolves is definitely raising an eyebrow for me right now. Mm. Just get the blue buff. Like, actually just give him the blue buff and he'll be fine in middle lane. Now he's not, and he's lost a lot of health to boot because Pac-Man just walked down and said, what up? Yeah, and Sybil, of course, probably wants to come yeah, back boy. and try and get it back for Fantix. Exactly right. Bit of a problem. Cannon Barrage will be back up very soon, though, for Fantix. So. And, and like, okay, so we actually mentioned this in mm -hmm. between the games. There's actually a big mistake that Sybil has been making consistently and that he's in a poor position. Look what happens when they meet him. Not happening one more time here as he slingshots his way away. Yeah, look what happens when they meet him and fight him. Like, right now, Seb's got completed jungle item with his long swords. Sybil goes for Boots and Mobility so that he can gank more and try and snowball the game out. And guess what? He didn't do that. He's now hurting his team because he's not a tank. You can see Chippy's actually thinking about stealing away a red buff. Tempered Fate comes down as T-Gun gets caught by it. Cannon Barrage comes in at the same time as Regret's looking for a stun. Doesn't get it on the Lucha. Sep has to use his ultimate there. Everyone pile in on the circle as Raze is dancing around this one as well. Shuts down Seb. But True Shot Barrage flies through. Luch is able to pick up one under regret, but Pac-Man having to flash away. Double kill comes in as Raze starting to go off in this game. And that could be fantastic things for the Direwolves. Yeah, and this is the moment where the carries of the Direwolves side start to make up for any errors that happened earlier. Stun coming in. Chippy's going so aggressive. Has, of course, the ultimate if he needs it. But there's the pillar. Barrel going to do a lot of work onto the Ezreal as Fantix Raze. actually has to do some work getting out of the way here. Turret. Does fall down. And Chippies is going to run away. I know Still Chippies was looking for that. He was looking for that ult. It was actually hovering on top of T-Gun and Raid. Look at Raze though. He knows. He knows he can get things done. Parallel convergence, of course, coming down. Chippies was like, oh, can I get back in? 
going to, as Fantic's doing exactly what he loves. Killing these red dots in the middle of the map. Yeah, but once again, Dyer will bite back. Yeah. And another step for them. Sybil starting to get his items. And we are going to see this one again as naturally Luch starting to fight off going for the support. Not something you want to see happen. Oh, that was actually very cute. Completely outplays him. And that was something that we saw on the bottom end of the fight where unfortunately for Luch, whilst it was a fantastic play and it's definitely commendable, it was regret that died and the rest of his team was dying in response. Yeah, and if all of your buttons are, as a victor are being used on the support, then likely things aren't going to go necessarily as well for you. Well, it was legitimately an ultimate end of Flash, so like, he used too much for that. Yeah. At the end of the day, he kind of just had to take it for what it was worth. Regret did use summoners of his own, to be fair. Well, you can see Ray's darting about the bottom lane. 20 CS ahead. Almost has that, but... Ooh, Fantix taking so much damage. That Chaos Storm has to be avoided. He didn't need to flash there, I don't think. And this tower is going to fall down. Seb picks that one up, and Sybil once again, not exactly where he wants to be. Does have the passive available. Nice slow comes in. As Luch just keeps eating these barrels. Yep. Direwolves mispositioning once again. Seb in the right place. Sybil biting off more than he can chew. Everything that... Diables are doing is very heads up and proactive, but a lot of the time it comes back to haunt them. Seb's still the hard carry for this team, and Luchas are victors, always going to have damage. Yeah. Drop the storm, you're always going to hurt somebody. Raid very close to that point as well with his items. But the carries are still here, and Abyss still well and truly with a real chance in game number two. Certainly are. Probably looking at this man right here to get work done as we move to the mid game. Yeah. 3 0 1 on Ray's on the Lucian. Lucian still, the coveted pick. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, Lucian's going to be good. He's got his good mid game build as well, going for the Ghostblade Black Cleaver. I think what we're looking at realistically is the next dragon as a must fight for Direwolves, simply because it would be two of them yeah. for Abyss. 16% extra battle stats here for the Abyss lineup will be hella dangerous. I always claw back that gold lead though, as they are just going to shove this minion wave right into the turret. And Raid is going to be able to pick that one up. One thing I do like is the fact that Luch did rush the perfect hex score. That's why Fantix used the flash in order to get out of the way, because that thing was moving so quick. Yeah, it scared him into flashing away. I still think it was ultimately not necessary. He's a Trinity Force boost of Swiftness gangplank. Yeah. And the Victor's ultimate was out of range. I also think it slows down the further away, doesn't it? It is from you. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Naturally, though, Fantix is scared. <laughs> Shoots his barrel in frustration. As, of course, Seb had stolen away that wolf camp. Even pinged it. Like, it's missing. Yeah. Way to go. Dragon, 10 seconds. This is an opportunity to try and get things done in the middle lane. What they really want to do is give Fantix the opportunity to set up near the dragon. Yeah. If you can hit a keg, it can change an entire fight. Rift Scuttler had been taken here from the Diwall, so irremovable vision is a big deal. And look at the item spikes. Rusty just pointing it out to me there. The Black Cleaver now done for Raze. True Shot Barrage is going to tag him. Raze was trying to ardently blaze the dragon. Oh, Sybil oh, doesn't quite make it in there. If only you could flash before you land with an Elastic Slingshot, but I don't think you can. Spantix clears out some vision. I don't think you really wanted to engage that one just yet either. Chippies and Pac-Man also hitting each other, which means you would imagine neither of them are fully capable of teleporting. Yeah. And I'm looking at Chippies as the one that probably has to. Direwolves don't actually just want to fight for the dragon at all. They would rather force a reactive play from Abyss, but Abyss actually outthinking them right now in this game of chess that is unfolding. Yeah. Villa is going to come in. There's the Subjugate actually onto Raze. They really want to focus down this Lucian if they can. You can see Tempered Fate comes in as Sybil. Instant knock-up onto Pac-Man, but he's right in the back line. T-Gun in trouble. Chippies wants to get the dive on, just ults his way out as Cannon Barrage. Stopping anyone from getting back. This team fight working out quite nicely, but Fantix a little bit too far up. The Chaos Storm is almost able to rip him apart, but not quite enough. As Sybil looking for the re engage gets in there. Sybil. As Pac Man gets back around. The passive's there, but I don't know, don't know whether it is going to be enough to keep him alive. As Luch is able to lock that one down. And Sybil, I mean, he seems to be the misguided one on uh, Dials at this stage. Sybil just proper suicided to them. He didn't actually need to at all. Now they sacrifice the dragon and a lost team fight. The gold lead might be close, but the difference between these teams right now with the two infernals picked up is actually quite large. There's nothing Chippies can do to outsmite that one. That and is now, a huge deal. Yeah, now we're looking at Abyss in the driver's seat. Pure strength. And Sybil is 40 CS behind here as well. Seb is so massive. 
That is a Mora Malmordi has picked up there as well, and I think he almost did that outright. I think I incredibly don't. frightening. I just don't know what Sybil's thinking. I don't want to, like, be too rude to him, but there are times where if you rush boots of mobility, you're not a tank. And if you're just losing your passive, it's essentially like buying a GA and then just dying. Yeah. Well, in goes Raise and Regret. They're looking for Pac-Man right here. As there's a lot of shred out of this Lucian. He's doing so much work with that Culling at the same time. Hits every bolt. He's able to pick that one up underneath the turret. They'll follow this up with a turret take at the same time. So Direwolves making a good play towards the top side. Yeah, Direwolves bottom lane to like make up to the scar right now from Direwolves across the board. Yeah. They're doing well, honestly. Raise and Regret, the two that we now have to look at to try and get the rest of the team to hard carry mode. Fantix still farming well. He's always going to play his part. But it really is Raze that you're looking towards. The young player. Now, rookie of the split last split, I believe. Yeah. But now has to outperform the younger, newer AD carry of Raid. Fantix, of course, will always be an insurance policy for the later stages of the game. The Gangplank, of course, scaling very, very nicely. But we'll see whether the Dials can get their team fights together because everything other than that uh, misconstrued engage from Sybil was pretty good towards the bottom side of the map in that team fight. Just losing the jungler at that stage is just something you don't want to do. Wow. Seb caught out of position you here. Win. Whoa. Okay. Able to get himself out. Uses the flash. Yeah. Look at the vision, though, the Diawals have got on the map, which is why they were actually looking for that play. They had a, a moment of strength, yep, simply from that vision. And you can see uh, Abyss now actually reacting to that. But that was the one opportunity they had that's now going to be covered up. Now they kind of need to work out what they're going to do. We might get a Battle of the Elements, Atlas. Yeah, it looks like it. Ocean Drake, of course, is going to be the next one. And if Diawals get it. Gee versus Wheeler. We're going to go back to Captain Planet. Seb just clearing out his jungle one more time. So, Raptor Sense helps him clear some of that vision from the top side of the map that Diawals had been able to establish. It's this uh, sort of top lane matchup that we've seen, it's all about Pac-Man continuing to stay ahead in farm, but not necessarily being able to have as much of an impact. But that's just going to change as this game moves on. The Super Tank going to be very, very useful here this game. Yeah, it has been farming well this time around. He's not 70 CS behind. Yeah. Everything looking up for Abyss. So move towards the later stages, honestly, of the game. We're getting our second items completed. Yeah, almost 25 minutes in. Oh Chippies and Pac-Man just battling one another. Dead destroy. Yeah, Chippies is in a whole host of trouble, of course. Has the ultimate as a parallel convergence it's comes now. in. He's ult immediately gets the double stun. And Sybil's actually going to turn this one around. Seb going to get caught with the Timewinder coming back. Cannon Barrage comes in as Seb has to dodge out of the way. Of course, Chippies still alive on the top side of your map. You can see chased by T-Gun as Regret gets Chaos Storm. Just moving very quickly. My god, those ticks do so much damage to Regret. Mm -hmm. oh, they are somehow able to disengage. It's Chippies! No, oh, died. gets ignited. Honestly, Chippies could have ulted a while ago, but he didn't opt into doing it. I don't think he actually had it because yeah, it was much it, earlier. Yeah. Very close, though, from Chippies. Almost gets out to safety. T-Gun using summoners to ensure it. And across the board, though, Direwolf still not able to win these fights. As close as it may have been. And as close as Chippies really was to living. Yeah. Right there, you can see... Able to chunk out Raze a little bit on the top side of the map, but Rapid Fire Cannon now completed. In goes Sybil one more time. Nice double knockup comes down as Fantix looking to try and get some damage back over the top. But so far, not really much of an answer. Just clears out the minion wave with these kegs. He wants to spike with his items before he actually team fights, but Sybil's just putting down some damage. Knows there was only two of them there. I think once again, we looked at Dragon for the last team fight. I get the vibes that it's going to be the same thing again. Simply because two oceans is annoying, as is two infernals that Sib Seb is utilizing. Oh, it certainly is. I actually just called him a Kiwi Seb. <laughs> so much damage. Gray is just going to clear out these minions in the mid lane. So Dio is still ahead in farm by 500, which is basically nothing. But if we're having a look at these t like comps for scaling, Abyss just look in such a good position moving into the late game. It's reasonably even. with the uh, Inferno break there. I think I'm actually looking at the Rapid Fire Cannon from uh, Raze as you do you, man. Phantom Dance is usually the item of choice. Either way, he'll have his crit. 
But he's also at a point in the game where that uh, power spike that we look at for Lucian with this item build is starting to drop off. Thankfully, he is ahead. And this is where Direwolves are starting to make the reactive plays with the next dragon up soon. They put Pac-Man up against Perfectional Fantix now. Yep. And he's got his big spike in items, so they get him into a fight. Could be disaster for Abyss. They need to actually show some caution. Well, the 1 3 1 is definitely an option here for the Direwolves. They do have power in that department with their double teleporter. Sybil's going to go over and clear out some vision in this Baron pit. That looked very funny. It was. Fantix actually on his own a little bit here towards the top side of Seb, clearing out vision. I think Ward is going to help him. He regrets making his way around. Red buff is going to go probably to Seb, unless, unless Sybil can grab it. He go to the top. Yes, yeah, steals it out of the way. And he'll be able to get this pink ward. That is value right now. Sybil sort of finding his way back in, getting his stride once more. And look at that health regeneration. And remember, 9% per fight. Just silly, especially with the Spirit of Azard. It's only going to be adding to that. Mm -hmm. And this is the change up. Once again, the strategy has been altered. Regret oh. might want to get out. Whole host of troubles. He misses the ultimate. Seb also has his in there as the Let's Bounce comes through. But. Cannon Barrage there, lots of damage down here as Luch doesn't want to get in there. Seb, very, very low, doesn't have the ult. So the disengage was successful out of the Direwolves, but some questionable decisions in game number two after what was such a clean game number one. But, but. only Regret dies, and he was the one to initiate that poorly. So, two teleports actually used on the other side of Abyss Esports when neither have been used from Direwolves. And this is an opportunity for them to exploit that fact, look for the Dragon, maybe even look for the Baron, because they've got a large window of time where they're actually at an advantage. They just get nothing considering that Regret was dead because he's now back up and moving towards that Dragon Pit. Yeah. Small victory for Direwolves, all things considered. And Chippy's actually getting hunted a little bit by the Abyss Esports side. And he's Chippy's. fighting for the scuttle. Yeah, Timewinder is going to fly through there as Seb. A couple of marks at the passive. This is going to go down extraordinarily Sibyl's fast. In. Yeah, in he goes. Can he steal it? No, he can't. As Seb blocks down an Ocean Drake for the team, but Stun comes down. Seb doesn't have the ultimate available anymore. You can see Direwolves able to get a bunch of work in, but there's Luch. Massive shutdowns on the whole bottom lane. Double kill already is Chaos Storm. Just going to transition onto Chippies. Luch. Picks up the triple. What a beast out of the mid laner of Abyss Esports. And they just clean up the Direwolves. Fantix. Just wanders out the bottom side, says, I ain't going to be able to do nothing. And that's the way it works once again. Luch comes into a late game team fight, a predictable timing, and he finds the perfect opportunity to flank. One of them recalls, the rest go do the Baron. Abyss, they're in the control position now to try and secure themselves the second game back. Three dragons, a Baron, everything they could want and more. Yeah, this Baron is well and truly dead. Right over the wall there, and you can see Luch is able to deter Fantix. So, he does have his Infinity Edge. The BF sword there as well, looking to go for his second one, I believe. Unless like, he's going to get an ab Abyss, uh, sorry, what is it? Essence Reaver? That's the guy. I mean, in all honesty, Fantix did his job in that last fight as well. He was hitting the kegs. He hit multiple people, I think, with more than one keg. Yep. As well. It's just that there was no bottom lane, and Raze was the big factor here. But if he doesn't exist, and there is no team fight. Yeah, well, Darwell's looking a little bit out of sorts. 3,000 gold is the lead here for Abyss. By no means an insurmountable margin. Darwell's are going to have to play pretty effective League of Legends moving forward to find their way back in here because this Baron buff and the team comp out of Abyss will make it very hard for them. And raid so far. 306. Man's doing well. Yeah, Red's been playing well. I mean, he's positionally actually quite a good AD carry. And his uh, target selection maybe needs a bit of work, but I think he's doing perfectly fine for his first game in the OPL. Very impressive performance. Well, you can see Diwals. Do have Chippies on the bottom side of the map. The rest of Abyss, though, are heading towards the top side. There's four members here. Luch answering <laughs> the split pushes. Raze. <laughs> Cheeky. Two spells, both missing. Yep. Sybil's actually looking somewhat aggressively in a situation like this, and reason being no teleport still. Yep. They actually are at least in an even matchup. Chippy's having his teleport, the only one, so a potentially uneven matchup. At least the deterrent was the implication of potential electric 
Whoa, there's just turret took so much damage there. You can see AE just with so much siege potential if they manage to get to the turret. It's and just so hard to team fight a double infernal team with a Baron buff as well. Not to mention the Ocean Drake helping them. Whenever they're switching lanes, they'll just get all their health back on their way over. It's gone from bad to worse for the Dire Wolves. Not out of it yet. There's Abyss with a lot of vision, especially towards the top side. But the vision's actually a good point that you raise. Look at the vision that Dire Wolves have got and compare that to Abyss and look at how deep one is and how defensive the opposite is. Yeah. Dire Wolves have no way of getting outside their own half of the map at the moment. They're just resigned to trying to find the ultimate team fight with the next keg that connects. I think they're waiting for perhaps the next item spike from Fantic, which might be right now, given that recall. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it does come in, so that's sort of the three items that he wants. 40% CDR built up, as well as a lot of movement speed and some protection with that Hex Trinker. This tower now not going to be long for the world. Ooh. Those barrels, once again, not going to be able to find it. Luch has really got his eye in as far as taking those down. Still looking threatening, however, because if one connects, it'll be like a thousand damage straight up at them. Ah, they're actually looking for some sort of engagement. There's the Tempered Fate. Raid has to use the Flash. Nice choice there from Dials. Trading that ultimate for a Flash is very important, although yeah. maybe not so much on the Ezreal. The good target selection as well, recognizing that they're all rotating bottom and that they had a window of about five seconds to try that. They won't be able to defend these outside turrets regardless. So they try and make some kind of play once again a deterrent. Big no avail. Though. This is impressive out of Abyss. They're making sure that that global gold is going to be mounting up. That's all three inner turrets completed for this team. A very short space of time. You're talking about Baron power plays. Doing very, very well. Yeah, and Lucha's a monster at the moment. Oh my god. The items that he has. Yeah. Unbelievable. 5 2 4. Late game player. Loves to farm as well. He's keeping up, if not besting Fantix at his own game. Most well, certainly is this time. To be fair, I've watched uh, Raze take a few of those wolves that Fantix <laughs> wanted. We're actually looking to try and catch Sybil out here. There will be a twisted advance. Flash used before it actually comes off. It's a, it's a nice cosmic binding that comes down from regret. Which buff's going to be stolen. Yeah, exactly. 15% bonus AP in the back pocket on a death cap, Victor. That is we are late game as heck. That is just silly amounts of damage that he will be bringing to these team fights over a long period of time as well. Now that, that Chaos Storm has been adjusted, Ray's has to dash through the pillar. It does so very nicely. His regret was backing just behind him. Yeah, no life steal as well for Ray's. He is a very big weak point for this team when it comes to sustaining any kind of poke. A single laser is enough to push him out right now. You saw how much damage it did. And they're controlling Fantix Keg so well. Yeah. Loot is a GP player, which helps a lot. I mean, this is a fight from the looks of it. At least the turret going down. Bard's on. Yeah, really nice tempered fate. Actually gets both of the carries there as the cannon barrage is coming down. Does decent damage to raid. Half of his health bars there. Clears out the minion wave as well. Buy them a little bit of time, but that is a big cooldown. Now unavailable for the Dials. Sybil? No. Woof. Yeah, no is the right answer there from Sybil. They hold true, however. Dials. Bizarre. Optimistic kick. Yeah. But he's holding a flank as well, so he's trying to stop them. But they're just going to lose it. Yeah, well, Teleport's actually coming in from Pac-Man here. This is the dive as Sybil jumps on top. Lambs of Spite is in there. Let's bounce on top from Sybil, but he's just getting destroyed. Pac-Man as well taking a fair bit of damage. Seb in the back line quite low. Just as Rage is going to take him down. Yeah, the big tanky Zack. No longer going to be in amongst this fight. The current lasted for quite some time, but you can see Abyss. They just want to take this one out. It's a decent keg from Fantix, but can they find any more to get the work done? Luch drops the base now as Chippy's on top. Gets a nice double stun. Pac-Man possibly in trouble here as the shutdown comes in. Nice play from Raze on the back end of the fight as Raid full health. Can he get the work done? Chippies? They want to fight, though. He does have his Guardian Angel. Ray oh. going to fall to regret. Does take down Ray's in the meantime, but Diwolves now on the offensive. It's only Seb and T-Gun there. Nice dodge out of the way of the Tempered Fate, as T-Gun's going to survive for now. But can Diwolves get any more? So they lose their inhibitor, but they have a period of time where they could at least get the dragon. Got to get those Raptors beforehand, right? For no particular reason, Mr. Fantix. Need that money. But the Dio will still hold strong. Barely. Yeah. Chippies. Gonna try and help take down this dragon. They probably need the help of the gangplank. We'll probably kill it with two kegs, but never mind. 
Sybil does nothing but die in these games, and that's the contrast between the two. Yeah. Maokai can tank forever. And there's no opportunity for Sybil to do that. Raid still putting in work as well. Target selection's there. Only sing praise. Problem is, Baron's up. They know the GP was just at the Dragon. If they catch anybody out right now, like even if Sybil loses a bit of his health, like half even, they would still look at the Baron. Gold lead's surprisingly not that big. Yeah, it's only 5,000 difference. As we're moving towards 70k, I mean, this is getting to the point where everyone has the items that they want. Even another BF sword picked up from Raze. He's sort of a few components and a recipe away from completing a six item build on this Lucian. Will be scary. That can be said as well for Raid. As the Ezreal's looking monstrous and his kite potential in the late game just so scary to deal with. Yeah, so they're actually playing the vision game right now, Abyss, and they understand the Diewolves are struggling. That's the Baron started up. Sooner or later, they'll face check. But that Baron is long gone. Yep, Tempered Fate is actually going to lock it down there as Sybil finds his way right in amongst the pit. Cannon Barrage placed very nicely, Ooh. but it is Seb that locks up the Baron. Can anything happen here, though? Chippy's deep. With a lot of damage that has been done. Lambs of Spike comes in. Chippy's now looking for a potential stun as he's so deep. He's just dead. Yeah, Ultimate unable to be used there as now Direwolves have to find their way out. They haven't got one kill yet. As Mantic's oh. big keg. In the middle of that one is Race. He's right in amongst it. Pac-Man a little bit deeper than he otherwise wants to be, and he will fall down to his Guardian Angel at least. Fantix able to at least get a keg down to stop people from moving forward. Diwolves hold the line, but Baron fell. Yeah, and it's almost just an indication of how this game has been going, that Sybil dies, and Fantix and Raze almost do it. But almost is never enough when it comes to these fights. The numbers advantage, the Baron secured, the objective control. It is at least trying to be implemented here from Abyss as well and truly there. God, Luch is so scary. And an 87 HP was the amount of health that Baron had when Sybil smote it. 87. Whoa. The level advantage that Seb has is just too damn high. And when it comes to smite battles, there is a very little chance that he gets any of them right now. But still, Diewolves, they're not out of it. They're certainly holding on. If they have anything, it's wave clear. And look, something that Gangplank has always been decently good at is clearing out minions that have the Baron buff on them. Not necessarily the front. No. He does struggle a little bit, especially with Luch and all the emphasis they're putting on killing those kegs, as you can see. Yeah. Stopping him from even looking at wave clear. Makes life hard. Also makes killing this uh, backline minion very hard. As you see, Chippy's time winder ain't going to be really much. Good. Trisha Barrage, trying to get rid of a Banshee's Veil by the looks of things on the side of Raid. There's the Tempered oh, Fate, Pac-Man not going to be there. Looking for something, Chippies does get himself a shield, but man, that's probably not worth going in on. Decent stun comes out from Regret, saves himself at the same time as his tower is well and truly under fire. Ray's still very high health, Fantix at full health as well, they have the big cooldowns. Diawals cannot wait too long, they don't want to let this tower it's drop. It's just gone. Yep, but they, they move in, they pick it up. There's the Cannon Barrage. Raid actually stunned on top of it as Sybil finds his way in. T-Gun in a fair bit of trouble. Sybil getting his health sapped. But you can see Seb's taken down Chippies. The front line is now gone. And Abyss, they've taken the second inhibitor and they're just moving straight towards this Nexus. Sybil, can he make his way in? First Nexus turret falls. Fantix, they pile on top of him and Seb grabs the kill. And Raze now dancing towards the top side. Nexus turrets, they no are going to be taken down. No chance at all as the Nexus is going to explode. And Abyss Esports, what a brilliant game too. After a really nice early play in game number one, uh, sorry, in game two from the Direwolves, Abyss just say, all right, no, guys, we ain't losing this. They pick it up. Yeah, look, it took an awfully long time for the Direwolves to lose, and especially given the Gangplank being there. Yeah, Lucian was quite strong as the game progressed, but they had a frontline abyss. I think that's the safest way to say this. The tanks were massive. Yeah. The control they actually had to set up for objectives was forcing Diables to just run in. There was no time for GP to actually set up the kegs. And whilst he was getting a lot of them later in the game and setting them up well, it was a too little too late scenario. Honestly, two Infernal Dragons, pretty good. Yeah, fantastic. But we are going to throw it back to the analyst desk to break down the first abyss win in this series. Thank you so much, Atlas. So Abyss bring it back to 1-1, taking game number two off the Direwolves. 
And, you know, we said, can they get it to the 40-minute game? Can they get it to six items where they are able to just, I mean, get it down to that scrappy level and start brawling you? And they did get it there. But a promising start out of Diewolves. I mean, they first blood Seb. They have a lot of control. Three kills onto Chippies. Like, what went wrong in this game? I think it was definitely smarter objective control over Abyss and knowing what to fight over. I think Diewolves just kind of fought rather pointlessly for about 15 minutes until Abyss scaled high enough into the game where they could actually win a team fight. And that's the big thing to empathize. It's... Uh Empath wow. Emphasis. Emphasis. Your wow. inability to speak English has spread has over here. Off, yeah. It's just awful. No, it's fighting over the correct objectives. There were so many times when uh, dire wolves would just be fighting a blind. Like, you think about the time when Phrase was massive on the solution pick, and suddenly he's... Uh, steamrolling a team fight, Victor walks up right next to him, but standing in fog of war from the brush because there was no vision around this dragon, and he immediately deletes him from the tin team fight. And that was kind of the big snowballing point for uh, AE back here. But it's this idea that Abyss Esports' decision making is not being tested for a new team into the OPL simply because the Direwolves are making so many mistakes and just throwing the game away from them. They had complete control over this and they chose to continuously dive in at the poorest times. I mean, think of how many times we saw Sybil just randomly jumping in over uh, Raptor Camp on choke points, but never with like the setup of the barrel, never with the setup of the vision. So I actually want to talk about that a little bit because Sybil in the mid lane kind of won that lane. He was able to get an advantage onto uh, Chippies in the top lane. They got the teleport out. It was looking good, but then he repetitively ganked there. Is there something to say about, you know, isolating a lane after it is one and just allowing the gangplank to scale up? Because time and time again, I mean, I'm thinking back to about 16 minutes into the game where he gave over the triple kills when the double teleports were used one more time. Is that just too much of a force from Sybil? Should he be able to farm up or look to another part of the map? Or do you think that was the right call to be able to revisit a lane that was already won? Well, he definitely underfarmed. I think that's for sure. Uh, he definitely wasn't taking enough once they needed to start forcing objectives and maybe dive towers. Um, I think that was a big problem for them. And it was definitely a ham-fisted effort to overgank the mid lane. I think that was way too forced. You and it just opens yourself. up Seb. Like, Seb is a main beneficiary of that, being able to take over. Yeah, and it's... This guy is camping me. He's going to gank my lane. And immediately, it, it was one too many ganks by Sybil. You had the instantaneous TP come from Pac-Man, which he beat... Uh, Chippy's TP every single time and Seb was waiting in the wings and like you said uh, Sybil didn't farm up Kindred it took her longer to ramp because she was camped in her own jungle but eventually she's going to be that massive late game threat which he became and you had great answers against Freys he's on a mid uh, range 80 carry against a massive Victor and Kindred there's only so much Lucian can do at that point there's a reason why uh, picks like Caitlyn are coming back into the meta with Victor and Azir being so strong is they're one of the few 80 carries that can safely late game uh, fight against those people whereas Lucian especially on the Korean build doesn't have those options yeah and in the end it means that Abyss are able to pick up game number Two, so we're going to game three. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in three and a half.